Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel American Losses Today. In today's video, we'll be highlighting American actors who have passed away in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we begin, we kindly ask you to show your support by giving this video a like. It really helps us out and means a lot. Thank you so much. Now let's get started. Ethel Kennedy, Nee Skakel, April 11, 1928. October 10, 2024, was an American human rights advocate and the widow of U.S. Senator Robert F. Kennedy. As a sister-in-law to President John F. Kennedy, she played an influential role in American political life. Following Robert's assassination in 1968, Ethel founded the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights, a nonprofit dedicated to social justice and peace. In recognition of her efforts, President Barack Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2014. Born in Chicago, Illinois, Ethel was one of seven children of businessman George Skakel and Ann Branack. Her father founded the Great Lakes Carbon Corporation, and the family was raised in the Catholic faith. Ethel attended Greenwich Academy in the Convent of the Sacred Heart before graduating from Manhattanville College in 1949. She met Robert Kennedy during a 1945 ski trip and later campaigned for John F. Kennedy's 1946 congressional run, deepening her connection to the influential family. Timothy Peter Johnson, December 28, 1946, October 8, 2024, was an American lawyer and politician who served as a U.S. Senator from South Dakota from 1997 to 2015. A Democrat, he also represented South Dakota's at-large congressional district from 1987 to 1997 and served in the state legislature from 1979 to 1987. Johnson is the last Democrat to hold statewide or congressional office in South Dakota and, along with Stephanie Herseth, one of the last Democrats to win a federal election in the state. Born in Canton, South Dakota, Johnson was the son of Ruth Jorinda and Vandell Charles Johnson. He grew up in Vermilion and earned a Bachelor of Arts, 1969, and Master of Arts, 1970, from the University of South Dakota. He later attended law school there, earning his Juris Doctor in 1975. After postgraduate studies at Michigan State University, he worked for the Michigan Senate before returning to South Dakota to practice law. He was admitted to the State Bar under the Diploma Privilege. Nicholas David Pryor, born Probst, January 28, 1935, October 7, 2024, was an American actor renowned for his roles in television, film, and stage. Born in Baltimore, Maryland, he was the son of Dorothy and J. Stanley Probst, a pharmaceutical manufacturer. Pryor's acting career spanned several decades, with early film credits in The Happy Hooker, 1975, Smile, 1975, and The Gumball Rally, 1976. He later gained recognition for his roles in Damien Omen II, 1978, Airplane, 1980, and as Tom Cruise's father in Risky Business, 1983. On television, Pryor was best known for playing Chancellor A. Milton Arnold on Beverly Hills 921 Doe from 1994 to 1997. His other notable TV appearances included The Addams Chronicles, 1976, Washington, Behind Closed Doors, 1977, and soap operas like Another World and General Hospital, where he portrayed Victor Collins. Pryor's extensive career also included performances in films like The Falcon and the Snowman, 1985, and Collateral Damage, 2002, leaving a lasting legacy in Hollywood. Emily Drinkard, September 30, 1933, October 7, 2024, known as Sissy Houston, was an iconic American soul and gospel singer. A founding member of the R&B group The Sweet Inspirations, Houston gained fame as a sought-after backup vocalist for legendary artists like Elvis Presley, Aretha Franklin, Dionne Warwick, and Chaka Khan. In 1970, she launched a successful solo career, winning two Grammy Awards in the traditional gospel album category. Houston was not only a gifted performer but also a matriarch to a musical dynasty. She was the mother of Whitney Houston, one of the most celebrated singers of all time, the aunt of Dion and Dee Dee Warwick, and cousin to opera star Leontine Price. Her legacy also extends to her granddaughter, Bobby Christina Brown. After a battle with Alzheimer's disease, Sissy Houston passed away on October 7, 2024, 
leaving behind a rich musical legacy that influenced generations. Robert Lowell Coover, February 4th, 1932, October 5th, 2024, was a celebrated American novelist, short story writer, and T.B. Stowell Professor Emeritus in Literary Arts at Brown University. Known for his pioneering work in fabulation and metafiction, Coover was also a strong advocate for electronic literature, co-founding the Electronic Literature Organization. His experimental writing challenged traditional narrative forms, making him a significant figure in postmodern literature. Born in Charles City, Iowa, Coover earned his BA in Slavic Studies from Indiana University Bloomington in 1953. He later served as a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy from 1953 to 1957 before earning his MA from the University of Chicago in 1965. In 1968, he publicly protested the Vietnam War by refusing to pay taxes as part of the Writers and Editors War Tax Protest. Coover taught at several universities throughout his career, spending more than three decades at Brown University from 1981 to 2012, leaving a lasting impact on literary arts. Rose Sr., April 14, 1941, September 30, 2024, known as Charlie Hustle, was an American baseball player and manager. He played in MLB from 1963 to 1986, primarily with the Cincinnati Reds, where he was a key part of the Big Red Machine that dominated the 1970s. Rose also played for the Philadelphia Phillies and Montreal Expos, winning three World Series titles, and later managed the Reds from 1984 to 1989. He holds MLB records for most hits, 4,256, games played, 3,562, and at bats, 14,053, among other achievements. Rose was a 17-time All-Star and won multiple accolades including Rookie of the Year, MVP, and two Gold Glove Awards. In 1989, Rose was banned from baseball due to gambling allegations, including betting on his own team. Although he denied it for years, Rose eventually admitted to betting on baseball in 2004. His exclusion from the Hall of Fame remains a point of contention, overshadowing an otherwise remarkable career. Dikembe Mutombo Mpolando, Mukamba, Jean-Jacques Wamutombo, June 25, 1966, September 30, 2024, was a renowned Congolese-American basketball player celebrated for his defensive prowess. Standing at 7 feet 2 inches, he was affectionately nicknamed Mount Mutombo due to his exceptional shot-blocking abilities. Over an 18-season NBA career, he became one of the greatest defensive players in history, winning the NBA Defensive Player of the Year Award four times. Mutombo moved to the U.S. at age 21 to attend Georgetown University, initially aspiring for a medical career before transitioning to basketball. He was drafted fourth overall by the Denver Nuggets in 1991 and played for several teams, including the Philadelphia 76ers, where he reached the NBA Finals in 2001. After retiring in 2009, his number 55 jersey was retired by the Nuggets and Atlanta Hawks. He was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015, recognized for both his athletic contributions and humanitarian work. Christopher Christofferson, June 22, 1936, September 28, 2024, was a prominent American country music singer, songwriter, and actor recognized for his significant impact on the outlaw country movement of the 1970s. He shifted away from the polished Nashville sound, embracing a more raw and introspective style. His debut album, Christofferson, released in 1970, included classics like Me and Bobby McGee and Help Me Make It Through the Night. As an actor, Christofferson was acclaimed for his role in A Star is Born, 1976, earning a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor. He also formed the legendary supergroup The Highwaymen, alongside Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson. Inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2004, he received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014. Despite facing challenges in his acting career, he continued to leave a mark with films like Stagecoach, 1986, and The Blade Trilogy. His legacy spans both music and film, showcasing his versatile talent. Donald Drake Hogeston, September 29, 1953, September 28, 2024, was an American actor best known for his iconic role as John Black on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. He began his acting career after winning a spot in a Columbia Pictures talent search, 
leading to his first major role in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Joining Days of Our Lives in 1986, he started as the mysterious character, The Pawn, later revealed to be Roman Brady. His portrayal of John Black quickly resonated with fans, especially through his enduring romance with Deidre Hall's character, Marlena Evans. Hogeston remained a central figure on the show, even after a storyline change in 1991 that brought back the original Roman Brady, Wayne Northrop. Despite budget cuts leading to his departure in 2008, Hogeston returned in 2011 to help refresh the series. His final appearance aired on September 9, 2024, just weeks before his passing on September 28th, marking the end of a remarkable legacy in daytime television. John David Ashton, February 22, 1948, September 26, 2024, was an American actor celebrated for his roles in the Beverly Hills Cop films, Some Kind of Wonderful, and Midnight Run. Born in Springfield, Massachusetts, he graduated from the University of Southern California's School of Theater after attending Defiance College. Ashton gained early rec in Colombo. He became a household name as Detective Sergeant John Taggart in the Beverly Hills Cop series, starring alongside Eddie Murphy. His role in Some Kind of Wonderful showcased his range, while Midnight Run featured him as a rival bounty hunter, emphasizing his comedic talents. Ashton continued to act in films throughout the 1990s and 2000s, expressing interest in reprising his roles in potential sequels. He returned to the screen in Beverly Hills Cop Axel Fster in 2024, leaving behind a legacy of memorable performances that resonated with audiences. Eugene Edward Mercury Morris, January 5, 1947, September 21, 2024, was an iconic American football player, best known for his role as a running back and kick returner. He had a successful eight-season career primarily with the Miami Dolphins, where he played in three Super Bowls and won twice. Morris was selected to three Pro Bowls, showcasing his talent on the field. However, his life took a turn in 1982 when he was convicted of felony drug trafficking and sentenced to prison. After serving three years, his conviction was overturned, allowing him to regain his freedom. Following his release, Morris transitioned into a motivational speaker, sharing his journey of redemption and resilience. He also appeared in the 1974 film, The Black Six highlighting his versatility beyond football. Morris passed away on September 21, 2024, at the age of 77, leaving behind five children and three sisters. His legacy as a talented athlete and inspirational figure continues to impact many. Daniel Jackson Evans, October 16, 1925, September 20, 2024, was a distinguished American politician from Washington, serving as governor from 1965 to 1977, and as a U.S. Senator from 1983 to 1989. After his service in the United States Navy, Evans was elected to the Washington House of Representatives in 1956, where he eventually became the Republican leader. He was elected governor in 1964 and was re-elected in 1968 and 1972, known for his moderate stance on social and environmental issues. In 1983, following the death of Senator Henry M. Jackson, Evans was appointed to the Senate and later won a special election. He served until 1989, declining to run for re-election. Throughout his career, Evans was recognized for his bipartisan approach and commitment to public service. At the time of his passing, he was the oldest living former U.S. Senator, leaving a lasting legacy in Washington politics. Olive Catherine Crosby, née Grandstaff, November 25, 1933, September 20, 2024, was an American actress and singer known for her work under the stage names Catherine Grant and Catherine Grandstaff. Her film career began in 1953 with memorable roles such as Princess Parisa in The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, 1958, and a notable performance in Anatomy of a Murder, 9. In addition to these roles, she co-starred with Jack Lemmon in Operation Mad Ball and portrayed Mama Bear in Goldilocks. In June 1963, Crosby became a registered nurse after training at Queen of Angels Hospital in Los Angeles. She later hosted The Catherine Crosby Show in the mid-1970s, where her husband, Bing Crosby, occasionally guest starred. After Bing's passing in 1977, she took on smaller roles, 
including the lead in the short-lived Broadway musical State Fair, 1996. From 1985 to 2001, Crosby hosted the Crosby National Golf Tournament at Bermuda Run Country Club. Her life was a blend of artistic talent and community service. John David Souther, November 2, 1945, September 17, 2024, was an American singer, songwriter, and actor, renowned for his pivotal role in shaping the Southern California sound. His songwriting prowess produced numerous hits for iconic artists, most notably Linda Ronstadt and the Eagles. Souther wrote and co-wrote many of the Eagles' biggest tracks, including Best of My Love, Victim of Love, Heartache Tonight, and New Kid in Town. His song, How Long, which appeared on the Eagles' Long Road Out of Eden, originated from his first solo album. In addition to his songwriting success, Souther achieved fame as a solo artist with hits like You're Only Lonely in 1979 and the duet Her Town 2 with James Taylor in 1981. He also explored acting, making appearances on television and in films throughout his career. Souther's lasting influence in the music industry was evident during the Eagles' 2008 farewell tour, where he performed alongside the band. His contributions have left an enduring legacy in American music, inspiring generations of songwriters and artists. Toriano Adderall, Tito Jackson, October 15, 1953, September 15, 2024, was an American musician and a founding member of the legendary Jackson 5, a group that rose to fame in the late 1960s and 1970s with the Motown label. Tito began his solo career in 2003, focusing on blues music, and received three Grammy Award nominations throughout his career. He was also inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of the Jackson 5, a testament to his impact on the music industry. Born in Gary, Indiana, Tito was the third of ten children in the Jackson family. His father, Joseph, worked in a steel mill while also playing R&B music, and his mother, Catherine, encouraged their musical talents. Tito began playing guitar at ten years old, leading to the formation of the Jackson Five with his brothers. They rehearsed tirelessly, balancing school and performances, which ultimately set the stage for their remarkable career. Their dedication and talent would pave the way for generations of artists to come. Otis Crandall Davis, July 12, 1932, September 14, 2024, was a celebrated American athlete, best known for winning two gold medals at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome. He achieved record-breaking performances in both the 400-meter race and the 4 times 400-meter relay, setting a new world record of 44.9 seconds in the 400 meters. This monumental achievement made him the first person to break the 45-second barrier, solidifying his place in Olympic history. Born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Davis faced the challenges of growing up in a segregated environment. He was of both Black and Native American descent and was raised by his maternal grandmother, Carrie Eaton. His parents, Johnny Davis, a bellhop, and Mary Alice Davis, a science teacher and movie theater cashier, instilled in him the values of hard work and perseverance. Following his high school years, he served four years in the United States Air Force during the Korean War, demonstrating his commitment to his country. Davis's remarkable achievements in athletics and his dedication to overcoming adversity continue to inspire generations. Tommy Cash, April 5, 1940, September 13, 2024, was a notable American country musician and the younger brother of the iconic Johnny Cash. Born in Dias, Arkansas, he was the youngest of seven children in the Cash family. After forming his first band in high school, Tommy enlisted in the United States Army, where he worked as a disc jockey for the Armed Forces Radio Network. Following his military service, he played with Hank Williams Jr. and landed a record deal with Musicor Records in 1965. He soon moved to United Artists Records, where he nearly reached the country top 40 with The Sounds of Goodbye. His biggest hit came in late 1969 with Six White Horses, a tribute to John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. Tommy enjoyed several top 10 singles in the early 1970s, including One Song Away and Rise and Shine. His final top 20 hit, I Recall a Gypsy Woman, was released in 1973. Cash also acted in the 2016 film, The River Thief, and continued touring until late 2016. Joseph Paul Schmidt, January 19, 1932, September 11, 2024, 
was a distinguished American professional football player and coach, renowned for his remarkable career with the Detroit Lions. As a linebacker, Schmidt played 13 seasons from 1953 to 1965, clinching two NFL championships in 1953 and 1957. His exceptional skills earned him 10 consecutive Pro Bowl selections and first-team All-Pro honors between 1954 and 1963. Schmidt was named the NFL's most valuable defensive player in 1960 and 1963 and was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1973. Following his playing career, Schmidt served as the head coach of the Lions from 1967 to 1972, compiling a record of 43-34-7. He played college football at the University of Pittsburgh, where he was recognized as a first-team All-American. Schmidt's legacy continues to inspire, as he left a significant mark on professional football through both his playing and coaching achievements. Chadwick Stephen McQueen December 28, 1960, September 11, 2024, was an American actor, film producer, martial artist, and race car driver, known as the only son of iconic actor Steve McQueen. Born in Los Angeles, Chadwick developed a passion for racing at a young age, beginning with dirt bikes at just nine years old. He quickly found success, winning his class in the World Mini Grand Prix within three years. At 10, he claimed victory in the Mini Le Mans event, a special track created for children on the set of the 1971 film Le Mans, where he raced alongside his father in a Porsche 917. Chadwick's love for speed and racing was evident throughout his life, and he eventually transitioned into acting, furthering his father's legacy. His talents spanned both the racing and entertainment industries, showcasing a multifaceted personality that left a lasting impact. Chadwick's contributions to film and racing will be remembered fondly by fans and loved ones alike. James Earl Jones, January 17, 1931, September 9, 2024, was an iconic American actor celebrated for his powerful voice and diverse roles. A trailblazer for black actors in the entertainment industry, he achieved EGOT status, winning an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. Born in Arcabutla, Mississippi, he overcame a childhood stutter through poetry and acting, which sparked his passion for performance. Jones made his Broadway debut in Sunrise at Campobello in 1957 and gained acclaim in Shakespearean productions like Othello and Hamlet. His role as a boxer in The Great White Hope earned him a Tony Award and led to his film debut in Dr. Strangelove, 1964. Jones became globally renowned for voicing Darth Vader in the Star Wars franchise, leaving a lasting legacy. He won a second Tony Award for Fences and received numerous accolades, including the National Medal of Arts. With contributions spanning decades, Jones remains one of the most revered figures in the arts. Dequance Devante Lamar, October 4, 1989 or 1990, September 5, 2024, widely known as Rich Homie Quan, was a prominent American rapper who rose to fame in the 2010s. He launched his music career in 2010 achieving significant mainstream success with his breakout single Type of Way in 2013, which reached number 50 on the Billboard Hot 100. His 2015 hit, Flex, Ooh Ooh Ooh, further solidified his position in the rap scene, peaking at number 26. Quan collaborated closely with fellow Atlanta rapper Young Thug as part of the Cash Money Records spin-off project Rich Gang, and together they released the successful single Lifestyle, in 2014. In 2018, he released his debut studio album, Rich as in Spirit, which debuted at number 33 on the Billboard 200, showcasing his unique style and lyrical talent. Throughout his career, Rich Homie Kwan made a lasting impact on hip hop and is remembered for his contributions to the genre. Wayne Leon Graham, April 6, 1936, September 3, 2024, was an esteemed American baseball head coach best known for his time with the Rice Owls. He led the Owls to a College World Series championship and five NJCAA World Series championships, demonstrating exceptional coaching skills and a commitment to developing young talent. Prior to his coaching career, Graham played professionally in Major League Baseball, MLB, for the Philadelphia Phillies and New York Mets, which provided him with invaluable experience. 
His dual perspective as both a player and a coach enriched his ability to mentor athletes effectively. Graham's legacy in collegiate baseball remains significant as he inspired countless players throughout his career, leaving an enduring mark on the sport. His contributions to baseball will be remembered by players and fans alike. Goldie Hawn has an important message about mental health. The 77-year-old actress took to Instagram on October 10th to share her thoughts on the significance of self-care in honor of World Mental Health Day. Speaking from a serene garden setting, Han opened up about the mental health challenges many are facing today. This time is actually challenging to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons, Han said in her video. But I would say it's important to take care of ourselves, to recognize when we feel anxious or when life just doesn't seem to be going well. She encouraged viewers to take a time out and focus on activities that bring joy and prayer. For Han, moments of overwhelm are met with deep breathing and a gratitude practice. There's so much to be grateful for, she added. She emphasized that this kind of self-care isn't just a luxury, it's essential. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world around you, Han said. What matters is how you feel about yourself, what you give to others, and what others give to you. Fans responded warmly to Han's heartfelt message, with many expressing gratitude for her reminder. Sometimes we just need to hear that it's okay, one follower commented. Another wrote, I've cried in my car every day for weeks. Mental health is important. Thanks for bringing awareness. Han has been a longtime advocate for mental health. In 2003, she founded the Goldie Hawn Foundation and its Mind Up program in response to growing concerns about children's mental well-being. The nonprofit equips children with tools to manage their emotions, build resilience, and understand how their brains work, helping guide them from despair toward optimism. She also explored the importance of social and emotional skills in her 2011 book, 10 Mindful Minutes, which encourages readers to lead happier, healthier lives. As a mother to actors Kate and Oliver Hudson from her second marriage to Bill Hudson, Han has maintained a four-decade-long relationship with fellow actor Kurt Russell, with whom she shares a son, Wyatt Hudson, 37. Clint Eastwood, the legendary Oscar-winning actor and director, is currently grappling with health concerns following the recent passing of his longtime partner, Christina Sandera. Sandera, 61, died recently, prompting a deeply emotional statement from Eastwood, now 94, in which he expressed his profound sorrow. Christina was a lovely, caring woman, and I will miss her very much. Eastwood and Sandera's relationship began in 2014, when they met at Eastwood's Hotel, Mission Ranch, located in Carmel, California, where Sandera worked as a restaurant hostess. Despite their 33-year age difference, the pair formed a strong bond and became a familiar couple in Hollywood. Sandera was a supportive presence by Eastwood's side, accompanying him to numerous film premieres and red carpet events, including her first appearance with him at the 2015 Oscars, where Eastwood's film American Sniper earned six nominations. Although they maintained a relatively low profile, those close to Eastwood noted Sandera's warm connection with his children, who described her as normal and well-liked. Their last public appearance as a couple was in 2019, with their most recent family photo taken in November 2022, showing Sandera with Eastwood and his daughters. In the wake of Sandera's death, concerns about Eastwood's health have become more pronounced. Those close to the Dirty Harry star have observed a significant decline in his physical condition in recent years. Reports indicate that he has lost considerable weight and appears more frail, with a noticeable hunchback that makes mobility difficult. Eastwood was last seen publicly at his youngest daughter Morgan's wedding just last month, where he appeared drastically different from his former self sporting an unkempt white beard and scruffy hair. Friends and family have expressed growing concerns over his increasing reclusiveness and diminishing vitality. While some close to Eastwood have downplayed the severity of his health issues, suggesting that the actor feels no pressure to maintain his former appearance and is still active, others remain deeply worried. A close friend mentioned that Eastwood continues to spend time with his grandchildren and occasionally plays golf remarking, 
Clint is living the golden years of his life on his own terms. However, insiders fear that the loss of Sandera has taken a toll on his emotional well-being. One source noted that the actor no longer seems like himself and now spends most of his time secluded in his home in Carmel. Many hope that he can find new passions or hobbies to help him cope with the grief and the challenges of aging. Sandera's death marks the third significant loss Eastwood has faced in just six years, adding another emotional layer to the weight he now carries.